This is Twit. As expected, BlackBerry unveiled its new BlackBerry Passport phablet today. Joanna Stern is a personal technology columnist for The Wall Street Journal, and Brad Mullen is the senior mobile editor for Engadget. Welcome to both of you. Hi. Thank you. All right, now, Joanna, you, you, you confessed in your piece today that you once were a diehard BlackBerry fan. Will the BlackBerry Passport win you back? No. I'm sorry to say no. And I really wanted it to. When I first kind of got this phone, I was I was I was really, really excited to get this phone, sit through the meeting, get the phone. You know, the first impression was this keyboard is just not as good as it should be. It's just not a typical BlackBerry keyboard. And for me, that was really the biggest deal breaker, though there are a lot of other things that um, sadly just are not going to replace an iPhone or an Android phone for most people. I think that was one of the most interesting things you, you wrote, which is that it's not a BlackBerry keyboard and therefore it's not very good. And you said you type a lot slower. But what is it exactly about that keyboard that doesn't remind you of the awesome BlackBerry keyboards of yesteryear? Yeah, I mean, I can hold this up. You can see it's like pretty yeah. shrunken, right? Mm -hmm. So the keys here are weirdly spaced in comparison to an older BlackBerry, and I have one around here someplace. But the bigger thing to get used to, it's really, really hard for someone who's just able to pick up a regular BlackBerry keyboard. So let me get some text up here. Is the number keys pop up on the screen. Yeah. And that's also the shift key as well and all the punctuation keys. So if you're a BlackBerry user, you know that there's some shortcuts, like you can hold down a, a button or you can, to capitalize, you can double space to get the period. But those kind of things only go so far with this keyboard. I wonder if how much of this is the fact that they've completely redone the keyboard and how much of it is that nowadays we don't expect to have to work so hard to have such a high learning curve to learn something like this. I mean, of course, all you uh, BlackBerry fans uh, spent a lot of time mastering that old keyboard and uh, you know now they're asking people to sort of remaster it I guess and is it a sign of the times or is it just that this is a, a, a turkey of a uh, keyboard yeah I mean I, I think people who buy this will get used to it just like we get used to typing on glass or we've gotten used to typing on glass they're going to have this classic version of the of the blackberry it's going to be very similar similar specs but the design of this is they're not going to have the the square shaped screen and they're going to have sort of a narrower curve here so you'll actually get sort of the traditional keyboard and i'm looking forward to that but again there's a lot of other problems with this device that's going to make it hard for people to switch if they've been using an iphone or an android phone now, Brad, you said that you kind of like the phone. What did you like about it? You know, um, I I would say that a lot of what uh, Joanna experienced, uh, it was very similar to what I experienced in terms of just having to get used to the, the new type of physical keyboard. You've also got this issue with, um, like, the whole idea of using the, the tactile keyboard along with the virtual row of keyboard. Sorry, the screen's not on. But um, the, the, the thing that actually intrigued me about the passport was the fact that the keyboard also doubles as a trackpad so you can actually do a whole bunch of gestures just like you would on any sort of uh, trackpad say on your macbook so um that's one that's one thing that that really interests me um the the thing that i was most frustrated by though is the one-handed use now what blackberry uh talks about is the, the one-handed use is is best employed when you put it in landscape mode and then let's say you're you're trying to scroll through a website or a Twitter feed or something like that you can actually use the keyboard um, now tilted on its side as a, as a way to scroll up and down so that way you're not actually blocking the screen so that's that's the one area that's takes a little getting used to um, and it's not going to be great for everybody but um, it was at least a very intriguing experience. I wouldn't say that I love the BlackBerry Passport, of course. Um, I think there is certainly a lot of issues there. But it's one where, you know, I, I could see a, a lot of BlackBerry fans actually getting into this. Well, you know, a lot of people... I agree totally I'm, with, the, with those gestures. The gestures make a big difference to me because it doesn't require you to have to sort of reach up to the screen, which has been sort of the problem with some of these touchscreen BlackBerry devices. Like it just becomes this sort of obstacle in the middle of you in the touchscreen. And totally agree with Brad, it speeds things up, not only for predictive typing, but also just for scrolling through emails or even you know, Twitter feed or all that kind of stuff. 
Joanna, I think it was you who said that the screen is approximately the size of a slice of grilled che of, of American cheese. And, yes, uh, and it, I'm going to get a grilled cheese for lunch as yeah, soon as this is over. Exactly. It's very suggestive. Yeah, I'm so hungry. <laughs> and so, but, you know, a lot of people are making a big deal about how strange and different this phone is. But isn't that good? I mean, uh, have we all gotten used to the idea that all smartphones should look exactly the same and sell hundreds of millions or whatever, you know, dozens of millions of, of units? Um, isn't it a good thing that you have this kind of strange device out there with the grilled cheese size screen and a sort of passport size uh, heart, uh, device itself? Um, I, I personally think that it'd be kind of cool if there's a lot more variety in smartphones other than just the, 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 the sort of iPhone-shaped glass that all the other uh, smartphones have. I agree. I think it's really good that we have a company experimenting with the shape of these devices. We don't need everything to be rectangular. But I think the big hurdle here is that the square actually makes it really hard, as, as Brad was saying, for that one-handed use. So because the width is... I don't even have my iPhone 6. I think it's, it's the 6 Plus is over here. I grab it. But the 6 Plus is thinner uh, or it's not as wide. So we, it's actually easier to get through to this side of the screen or to reach this side of the screen versus this, which is wider. So if you look at, at it that way, you can see it probably hmm. better yeah. that way. So, you know, it's just an ergonomic issue it, it's a great idea it's a great idea that we have sort of a square shape that we would see more more text horizontally than we would vertically but for me it was just it just came down to this thing was really not comfortable for me to hold and again just the design of the three row keyboard i found that when i'm typing on it it becomes really top heavy and so your fingers are down here and this thing is sort of wobbling i guess that you know that again is not so much a, a result of the square but just the fact that the screen is a little bit taller than the keyboard now brad the passport of course is new hardware but it also came with new software blackberry os 10.3 what's new about this operating system well, for one, they've got a virtual assistant on there, just like Siri on the iPhone and Cortana on the Windows phone. So this essentially does all the same kinds of things that you would expect in any of those virtual assistants. Um, now, the uh, the thing that I really like about the uh, the assistant on BlackBerry is the fact that you can actually activate it by pressing the middle button on the right hand side. So just I don't know if you can see that, but just this this button right here. So you just long press it and you're in. Whereas um, with Siri, you can only do like a voice activation if it's plugged in. Otherwise, you have to press down on the home button. Again, that's not a huge issue. Um, it's just a different way of doing it. So I think some people are going to find this a little bit more comfortable than others. Um, BlackBerry OS 10.3 is also, uh, it also has a little bit flatter design than in the past, but you still have the same BlackBerry hub with all of your messaging, which um, I honestly really like in, in terms of triaging my email. Um, I think it's uh, easy to just have all of your different accounts put together into one section of your phone and be able to, to go through it all. Um, you know, that may not be a huge deal to most people who only use, say, one account. But if you got Twitter, Facebook, uh, multiple email accounts, then it is quite nice to be able to just manage it all on one list.